creative living, utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world with your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living today. We're going to learn how to create an all-white tropical centerpiece and demonstrate using duct tape to make rosettes, which can then be used on purses, clothing, jewelry, and even shoes. One of my guests is Casey Schwartz, and she's a floral designer and co-owner of Flower Duet in Redondo Beach, California. Casey's going to show how to use all white flowers to create a clean, monochromatic, low centerpiece. This centerpiece is good any time of the year or as a winter white arrangement. Today, she's going to use mini callus and white anthurium, along with white lily grass and white tea leaves. We'll begin the show today with Marissa Puelko, and she's a crafter and designer from Winfield, Illinois. Marissa will show how to make duct tape rosettes using non-stick cutting tools and rolls and sheets of duct tape. These rosettes can be made in different sizes using a variety of colors and patterns, and they're great for embellishing. She has a special layering technique for creating outlined effects with duct tape sheets. Her business is Modern Surrealist. Marissa, thank you so much for being here. And I have to say, every time I see you, whether it's on television somewhere or at your craft shows, you always have all this pretty colorful stuff on. Mm -hmm. And you design these things and make them. How, how did you start doing this? I do all kinds of bright and colorful, easy projects mm -hmm. and accessorize you according to your style. Um, so uh, one of the things I've been really into lately has been duct tape crafts. Who would have ever thought to make duct tape with crafts other than to tape the back side of something so it wouldn't come <laughs> loose because it really sticks well. It sticks and it's so sticky. It usually is kind of hard to work with. Mm -hmm. but Be because it anymore. ruins scissors. It can just stick to them and then you finally end up throwing those scissors away. But now we can solve that problem, can't we? <laughs> These are Westcott brand scissors, mm -hmm. and these are the titanium bonded non-stick scissors. So they're great mm. for cutting sticky stuff. They never get stuck. You can cut sticky back Velcro, duct tape, tape, you name it, trimming sticky edges uh -huh. of stuff. And so they never get sticky. They never get gummed up. You never have to clean them, and you never even have to sharpen them. Oh, that's great. Last a lifetime. And then we were talking about how we have to have lots of pairs of scissors because some of us can't keep up with things. So you came up with such a clever idea. It's called a holster, scissor holster. Yeah, well, I'm so in love with these scissors and I would never you want to lose, lose them. them. <laughs> <laughs> and my craft room gets so messy, if I put something down, I can never mm -hmm. find it again amidst the piles of colorful boa yeah. and tape and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I can imagine. So this way you can keep your uh -huh. scissors handy on your hip at all times, accessible and safe. Oh, you have them on safe. a little belt. Yeah, uh -huh. and I even made this belt out of duct tape using my nonstick scissors. Uh, of course, you'd have <laughs> to do that. And then a smaller size of holster for the little bitty scissors. Yeah, Great. so I'm prepared for anything. And this is kind of how they come packaged so we know what to look for. And I love your little picture and your name down on the bottom. That's kind of special. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> custom design by me for uh -huh. you. And you can choose They're all choose wild. One. Yeah, they're well, all they're wild. all wild, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all different okay. wild. I guess the brown one might be the most... It's the calmest. Uh, calm one, yeah, earth tones. Well, what we're going to show today, using these scissors, because they don't stick on things like duct tape, are little rosettes. Yeah, it's so easy to make these rosettes out of duct tape, and you can use them to embellish all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. and we'll look at your hair uh, bow in a minute, but this is also another hair bow. Mm -hmm. And then you use these on little pouches. Yeah, you can use them to embellish your accessories. And this is all duct tape? Mm -hmm. I've never seen all these patterns. Yeah, they come in all kinds of great patterns, mm -hmm. and so there's so much you can do, and it's so easy. It's really fun for kids. Oh, look, here you get one of the stripes boys. here, and then the it sort of makes that rosette really pop. Yeah, you're not going to believe how easy this is to oh, do. How cute. It looks like a little skirt. Yeah, I went <laughs> for kind opens. of a 50s kind of bad yeah. girl look Put on your that. change in it or yeah. coupons, whatever <laughs> you have. Let's look at your hair bow, too, because that was what I mentioned earlier. Any size, you can make these for little kids, you can make them for grown-ups. Yeah, they and you can work. layer different uh, uh -huh. patterns, and um, I also made oh, you this. Oh, this a bracelet, and that's what we're going to show today, too, is a, making a bracelet. Yeah, it's kind of like a little corsage, mm -hmm. but you could really, you could do a belt, necklace, 
Oh, and speaking bracelet, of necklaces, yeah. you made me this one because you know I love black and silver so much. Yeah. And these are just rosettes, but they're double. Yeah. So that you can change the color of the gem, like if I wanted to wear all turquoise, mm -hmm. I might want to turn them all. Yeah, I, I wanted that. to give you options. I knew you uh -huh. like silver and black oh, and, of course. and white, so. Uh -huh. Well, thank you. I love it. Okay, these are a couple of the little bracelets. Yeah. I thought of my granddaughter when I saw this one with the little cupcake. Would so she love that? She, that's darling. But well, any age of us can wear these cute little any bracelets. Any age, yeah. And, and from a distance, you don't even know, you know, that it was so easy duct to tape. do. Yeah, it's just okay. duct tape, and it's so easy. Kids love it, and grown-ups love it. It's great for all ages. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to do. And a great do. way to use up leftover crafts because, you know, we'll have one button or we'll have um, one little six-inch piece of a boa mm -hmm. ribbon or whatever. So what do we do? To How do we start? Okay, well, we're going to do a bracelet for your granddaughter, so Good. why don't you pick your base? We'll just do a simple uh, band, so maybe you want to pick Well, I already something. know I want the little, oh. the little kitty. Little kitties? Because she loves that. Okay, uh -huh. perfect. So, I'm so assuming this is she's... just like those rolls of black duct tape, but they're patterns. They're yeah, beautiful patterns. it's so fun. It's become so fun to just... Uh -huh. Coordinate and we and can contrast. look in craft stores and, and um, sewing stores, that type of thing. Yeah, you can these. get these at craft stores, and um, they're really taking off with the teens, tweens. Well, and now that kids, we can actually and cut it, and, <laughs> and adults. <laughs> yeah, like me. I'm an adult, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, to make the basic band, all you're going to do is take a piece of mm -hmm. duct tape. Now, do we measure the wrist or yeah, do we I'm do all of that? Yeah, I'm assuming her wrist is kind of small, but uh -huh. you, first you just take air on the longer side because okay. you can always cut Good away. Idea. And then you're just going to fold it over on one side. It's just like sewing, but you don't even have to iron or stitch yeah. or do anything. It's like sewing when you don't want to take all that time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a lot of free time, so I like my crafts to be fast, quick and easy. So let's see, her wrist, would you say, is it about? That looks, uh-huh. And that yay. way it would, she okay. could grow into it too. Okay, so I'll just cut cut off the little see, edges. Just, so easy, amazing. doesn't stick, mm -hmm. they're non-stick. It's so easy to do this craft mm -hmm. with these scissors. So then you're gonna also have a piece of Velcro. Oh, okay. Oh, and it cuts through that sticky Velcro too, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Uh -huh. And that's just going to go in. It's not going to be the whole thing. Yeah. It's just the It's just going to be a little piece uh -huh. for the closure. So on one side. Oh, and this is a little big, so I'm going to have to trim this. Well, that's so no problem. It's <laughs> no problem because when you have these nonstick scissors, it doesn't even stick no. to the scissors. But see, it sticks mm -hmm. to your finger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you put that on one side. Mm -hmm. And we will trim. And put it on the other mm -hmm. side. Right. So when you laugh so, it yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it wrong many times before. But, <laughs> but you can just peel it off. Yeah, you don't have to you take out do, stitches. You can do it. Yeah, it's not like getting out your seam ripper. <laughs> so they're okay. great for making easy gifts. Like when you don't have a lot of time, uh -huh. you just keep these basic supplies on hand, your non-stick scissors, you're ready to go. Okay. And it's thrifty. So then you want to pick a pattern or a color mm -hmm. for your I wanted to use the, the pink. Oh, perfect. I, I like where you're going with this. Very nice. So all we're going to do is take another long strip. Oh, like about a foot long. And this comes with this. You've made so many, you kind of know how to gauge how long. To, yeah. Would you say at least double the length of whatever you're working yeah, on? Yeah, if you're pleating, I would say that. And you okay. can also use this great mat for measuring. Oh, uh-huh. And so, it doesn't stick either. Yeah, and it's a great place to kind of park if you have to stop, answer the uh -huh. phone, then you can uh -huh. come back, get it again. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be like stuck to your cat or something when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> so then all you're going to do is fold just, part of the way. Just like we did, just fold it up one side. Yeah, but on this time you just p p fold it partially on one mm -hmm. side. Okay. And then I'm going to just trim my edge, so easy. And so this is how you do the folding for the rosette. It's a pleating. It's kind of like a pleating. Before we did pleating like that, and now we're just going to pleat at an angle, like pleat, mm -hmm. 
complete. Oh, because we're making a round rosette. Yeah, we're obviously. just making a round rosette, and then you can use these. And for that all part kinds of that stuff. you didn't cover up, that's what you're using to stick down. Yeah, I see. but I'll that's... also reinforce it a little sure. because I like my stuff to really last. And after you touch it a lot with your hands, it loses a little bit. Sticky. Yeah. But that's okay because then I'm going to show you my other favorite thing to use when I craft, okay. which is a hot glue gun. <laughs> Who can live without those? Yeah. With, with these nonstick scissors and, and these materials I'm using here today, uh -huh. I could stay entertained for the rest of my life. And you know what? They're so inexpensive too, and that's another thing you, you look for in crafts, things that are affordable to make. And, and you would never know it when you look at the finished item how affordable these mm -hmm. really are. So then when I get to the very end... I'm going to just trim it, mm -hmm. and then I like to kind of fold it over a little finished bit. Edges. Yeah, finished edges. I like edge. that, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that. I have to have it that way. So then I'm going to put that aside for now, and I'm going to take the duct tape sheets, mm -hmm. and I'm going to cut a little piece off here and cut a circle, and you'll see... Now, if we happen to not have the sheets, could we use the other? You yeah, just... you could just use a, a piece of the, the rolls. Okay. But sometimes this it's is easier, easier because to it's cut got the circles. backing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not with stuck circles, I like to use the sheets, but you can cut shapes out of the rolls with these nonstick oh, yeah. scissors. It does work. So then what I'm going to do is open up the bracelet. Oh, you're, you're making a foundation for yeah, it, Yeah, I like everything to be really indestructible. I don't like my crafts to fall apart when people are using them. So then you just put oh, that underneath. you put it on the bottom. Yeah. Okay, I see. And then you're going to take this uh -huh. and put it on there. Got it. And so it really does stick oh, uh -huh. very well. And it makes it smooth on the back of your wrist as you're exactly. wearing it. Exactly. That's nice. And so it doesn't stick to you. It covers any adhesive that might be left showing. And sometimes I, I take a little bit of hot glue just to really... Sort of reinforce it. Yeah, or... on the areas where there's not sticky to sticky, I like to just do that so it really is indestructible. Which is mostly on the ed edges, the sides, yeah. I guess you'd say. Okay. And I also use this to embellish because you've got to put something right in the middle. Like, this mm -hmm. is a simple one, but you could even triple these up, going oh, bigger, bigger, yeah, bigger. you could. Mm -hmm. Layering. Uh -huh. How about, is that too crazy? Well, nothing's too crazy, in my opinion. Well, that's I think true. that looks great. I like that. I think you're probably the first to put Hello Kitty and Zebra together like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted an original. Oh, yeah. All about the originals. And then you're just going to put cute. that in. And you're just going to hold it in place for a second or two like we do mm -hmm. with And that's it. That's it. And we're, it's finished? Yeah, it's, it's set setting a little up while, a little bit. But, uh -huh. And then we could wipe off yeah, the Yeah, you could wipe glue. that off. I didn't want to get How burned on the oh, air. Look, it's so pretty. I, love, I may not give it to her after all. I may you change your it. mind. Is it for you now? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we won't tell her. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Marissa. I just love to find out new ways to do things and to use new products. These scissors are going to be great. Thank you. Thank you. Casey, thank you so much for being here. I always enjoy when you come because, first of all, I learned to not be so afraid of making <laughs> arrangements with flowers and also to, to know what the names of some of the different ones are. I just have always known if I like them or not. But what are we going to do today? We're going to work with some tropicals and we're going to make a nice low one-sided arrangement. And some of our elements are actually available year-round and might be kind of surprising. You can pick up some of them in the grocery store. But we're going to use these wonderful leaves to hide our, um, our little architecture underwater here. And these are called apodestra. And oh. they're wonderful because they, they bend really easily. So Flexible. we can use them uh -huh. in an arrangement uh, on their own like we have here. And this but is the arrangement that you're going to this create. This is exactly what it? we're going to make. It's low enough for like a dining table. You could talk over it. Sure. Or you could put it on a buffet table because or it's a one-sided, isn't it? Right, or uh -huh. even on a mantle. So a it mantle. would be nice uh -huh. there too. It's not. It's pr relatively narrow, so it wouldn't be too... Um, too bulky to put there. Right. So we're oh, going to use beautiful. these to wrap okay. around our foam in a moment. But we're also, some of our other elements, we're going to use this. This Those is called anthurium. I think the first time we saw these, we thought they were plastic. And we just couldn't get over like it. it. But they're, uh -huh. they're actually real. 
and they're nice and long lasting. So that's the oh. great thing about tropicals that they do that. And there's no uh, no thorns and nothing to clean. So you don't have to take a, spend time doing that. Right. And then we're going to use some mini calla lilies. And often you'll see these growing in the garden quite large. But uh -huh. these are really popular for wedding bouquets. Um, but they have a lovely um, arc on them naturally. So we're going to work with so these work a little with, bit. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we're going to go with nature on these and uh -huh. and, and and show off their their curves. And then our last element is the dendrobium orchid. Are those beautiful? They are just oh. so much fun and also long lasting. And this is how you want to buy them when you have a few blooms that are already underway and then you have lots more blooms to go. That will open. That will, uh -huh. will open. You want to stay away from any of these blooms that might be yellow or brown uh -huh. because then they're not going to open. Oh, so okay. it's nice to have the green ones. But we're not going to keep them completely intact. We're going to break these down into little sections and uh, and then use them mm -hmm. fully to fill out our arrangement. Oh, I can't wait to see right. how you do that. I Great. love those. All right. Well, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get our, our foam into our container. And you really don't want to ever see your floral foam when you've got it in a uh -huh. glass container or at all. So that's... Uh, that's the first rule of, of business. So we need to hide that. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it sort of like a present mm -hmm. in our apodestra leaves. So and you've already soaked this, is that right? I have soaked okay. it, yes. Good point. We've soaked that already. And uh, what we need to do when soaking is uh, make sure that it's comp the whole brick is soaked all at once. Mm -hmm. And that way, when you're sticking your stems in it, it's going to be able to have the water uh, pulled from there. Mm -hmm. And kind makes of like the arrangement stay beautiful much It stays longer. exactly where you stick it. So okay. yes, it's very handy. Um, and to prep our apodestra leaves, we're just going to cut off the heavier part of the stem here because we don't really need that. Mm -hmm. And we may only need two to wrap. So we're going to take mm -hmm. these two. Now, as I said, they bend really easily. So we're just going to sort of wrap the foam around with these. Mm -hmm. And how, how I do it is I just lay it down, put the foam on top, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to take the blunt oh, end. Opposite ends. Yes. Uh -huh. And hold that one like that. And this one like this. Mm -hmm. That one like that. And then tuck this tuck. one in. Uh -huh. Tuck this one around. And it may not cover all of it initially, but we'll get it up in there. And mm -hmm. we'll pop it in there. If you'd be so kind. Like that. Get all a little size in. I remember when you used, I think you used tea leaves We did last don't time. You? Yes, we did. Uh -huh. There we it's go. It's just amazing how so much it more beautiful it is. <laughs> so we're done. So <laughs> it makes it very, very simple. Uh -huh. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it around and actually add to it as we as we build it. Since it is mm -hmm. one-sided, and I think this might be the better front side, it's good to be able to see where we're going to be doing our placing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to place first our three um, anthurium. And we're going to place them three in a row, sort of like we have here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have come, have them coming out the sides. And again, very easy because we don't have to do any cleaning on the mm -hmm. uh, on the stems. But so you're kind of gauging where to cut them now by yes. putting all three and together. And you just sort of lay it in front and think, hmm, that seems far enough out because we don't want to go too wide. Because no. we don't. The wider you go, the more flowers you need. Oh. The closer mm -hmm. down, the tighter you go, the less flowers you need. Mm -hmm. Which so we're going to go with that. So I'm going to take this first one, just going to give it a trim. And, and I'm you cut slide, it at an angle. Cut at an angle. That. I do uh -huh. that because a pointy end goes in easier than a yep. blunt end. And then we just slit it and right in there. And so we have there. this anthurium facing us. Facing since this us. is the front. Front and mm -hmm. sided. So we're going to place these and then we're going to turn it around and show how it looks. And this one's going to go okay. on top right there. Those do look so unreal. Mm -hmm. They're so perfect. And then this last one we're going to just tuck right in front there. Okay. So there's our first three. Slide that around. Mm -hmm. This is our front, mm -hmm. okay. Then we're going to place our calla lilies, and our calla lilies are going to come out the other side. Mm -hmm. We want them to, to sort of extend balance. out this way. Mm -hmm. So we want to take a look at them and see who's going to go where. So I think our longest one maybe should go out the furthest. So we're going to sort of stack those uh -huh. like that. So that gives us an idea already for where we're going to cut. Now, calla lily stems, rather, are very delicate. So we almost need to pre-poke the holes for them. Oh, unlike the, these. Right, unlike mm -hmm. those. So best tool to use, the stem that you just used for the oh. Ethereum. <laughs> so what I'll do is we'll just poke right in. One, two, three. Hmm. So okay. it's sort of that way you don't paint damage by number. the, the right. stem. And then we can the just slide filler. that right in. And we're going to start with this one going with the arch. And I'll put this one in. And I'm just going to slide it in where the stem goes in. So that way it doesn't I break. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to give you this one to place. And we'll go a little bit to slide that one right in there too, right on top. Great. 
And then if you like to do the last one, I'll make that one a little shorter. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we'll slide that one right in too. You've almost made a florist out of it. There we go. All right. Very sweet. Just put that hmm. in here. So now we have those. So we have a little pattern going mm -hmm. here. Right. So and also Brilliant. when you're designing, odd numbers seems to work best. Uh -huh. So we have the three here. Decorating. And, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Three same. Float, no, throw pillows, that sort of thing. So uh -huh. we want to keep that going there. Now we still have a lot of space to cover and we want to add a little bit more fun to the back. So we're going to take our apodestra leaves and see which oh, ones we this like. This is why it's so good that they bend again. Yes, because we're going to use flexible. something that everybody usually has if, at the office or at the house. We're going to use a stapler, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> which seems a little unusual. But we just simply fold the, the leaves back, uh -huh. anchor it to here, grab our stapler, and we just anchor it like that. Ta-da! Very simple. Okay, yeah. Give it a try. Sure, I think right. I can handle this. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just where it's still soft, yep. Great, there you go. You've got it. And we can do one more. Oh, I love that big yellow. Yes, and this is um, this is one. called variegated, and it variegated. comes in the two colors. It also the apodestra and the tea leaves come with this, and they also come solid green. Mm -hmm. All right, so this we can probably place facing out this way, and we're mm -hmm. going to do two on one side and one on the other, sticking with the odds. So I'll take oh, maybe mm -hmm. my biggest one will go by itself behind the calla lilies these because are smaller. they're smaller. Uh -huh. Exactly. So I'm going to give you that one. And these two, since they're so big, I'm going to put them behind, and we're just going to place them. Yeah, you like you that. did cut off. Some I did of come off some of the stem. Sephora foam is really forgiving. It doesn't take that much. I'm going to turn it turn it that way. Yep. Yeah. Just slide it down. Yeah, I think we'll do a little bit more of an angle, just oh, like mm -hmm. that, to sort of okay. mimic what we've got going on here. How Perfect. Pretty. So uh -huh. now. Fill in the blank Fill is in what we blank. need to do. So we're going to take our orchids, and as I said, they come beautiful. And actually, I think we did a bud vase before uh -huh. where we just took 10 of these and put them in a bud vase, and wow. they were perfect and good to go. But we're going to do a little bit more manipulating today. So I'm going to take them in sets of two off the stem. So I'm going to come up here and take that one. I'm going to leave intact, and that's a single one, and that one, and that one. Oh. So now I have all these pieces, and basically... Just we just in. fill in. Uh -huh. Stems close up in about 10 seconds. So you do have so to So you want to get your flowers you... in mm -hmm. once, yes, once you've cut them. And then these ones we're going to put in throughout to just extend oh. it. And since they're so thin, they are um, able to extend out without being really obtrusive. Mm -hmm. So do you want to prep that one? You said have about two. Two on per it. little package, we'll call it. And then leave your, your spear to to go in separately and then just go ahead and place yep yeah, that'd be fine or nice and low coming out the side or out the back nice and then these little guys just fill in all over wherever the foam is quickly mm-hmm great kind of tall mm-hmm that's all right and then you have another one there and I'm gonna put this one coming out this side Tie it all in. And you teach classes, so you actually teach people how to do these beautiful arrangements. Yes, it's really fun. We teach, we just taught a great succulent celosia class last week. It was just beautiful, very vibrant. And so it's always amazing how many techniques one can cover, but it's also amazing you have this one technique and you have this a group of people and Everyone's got the same set of flowers, and everyone's comes out slightly comes different. Out different. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I bet. And there we go. That is beautiful. That didn't take and us any really time at was, all. No, it was very easy to do. Once you kind of know the, the threes, and then using these really do add a, a different depth to it, I think. I think so, too. It looks beautiful. Well, as usual, I'm just always amazed at what you can do. Thank you so much for showing us how. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to stage a home for selling. We'll review some basic techniques for cakes and cupcakes, and then we'll talk about decorating on a budget. Did you know that a house will sell 80% faster if it's been staged? One of my next guests is an interior designer, and she's going to share lots of ideas for expanded staging of a house. Another guest is going to show how to do a variety of techniques that make decorating cupcakes, cookies, and other delicacies even easier. This includes filling a cupcake, using a spatula to apply the icing on a cupcake, and how to make easy swirl designs. And finally, we'll learn how to arrange any room in the house in just five easy steps with an easy-to-use online room planner. 
All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. And I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much, and I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6600 Series, and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information, and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. As with all of the Creative Living booklets, you'll find information on foods and nutrition, clothing and fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or any of the other booklets we have available online. Once again, just go to kenw.org, click on Creative Living and download the booklet titled the 6600 series. We also want to encourage you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.